In this episode, The Nazi Pig Theorem or NPT by Alan Barker. Anyone who non-consensually violates your brain mind mentation using Mengele-like methods is a Nazi pig. You do not care what a Nazi pig thinks. You do not care about a Nazi pig's opinions. You do not respond to a Nazi pig ridiculing you, threatening you, trying to distract you, or otherwise trying to manipulate you. You work to get a Nazi pig hanged. Isn't that obvious? Don't you believe it? Then remember it and act like you know it. NPT is as sharp as a razor. The contrapositive of NPT is also useful. If they are not Nazi pigs then they are not raping your brain. So you can think anything about anyone. It's just you and the Nazis in your mind, and their opinions do not matter at all. If you have a passing thought about someone and the Nazis try to harass you with it or make you feel guilty about it, it does not matter. The Nazi pig's opinions do not matter unless they somehow help to get the pigs hanged. If you think some thought about someone who really is raping your brain, then you have some worse things to think about that Nazi piece of human garbage than what floated through your brain originally. One use of the Nazi pig theorem is to try to go on with ordinary life even as you are being tortured and you know the true, evil nature of the society you are living in. Spend some time each day working for justice in the physical world, and the rest of the time try to ignore the Nazi pigs and get on with your life as best as you can. My philosophy is basically to wish people well, and any differences I have heard with people are all water under the bridge after not too long. But atrocities never, ever pass under the bridge. The victims never forget, and never should forget. Of course any victim is free to choose to forgive his or her torturers, but for torturers to lecture their victims about forgiveness is the Christianity of the oppressor. Forgiveness also does not preclude justice. The unfortunate reality is that when dealing with anyone, they are either a Nazi or a non-Nazi. Torture makes it that clear. This is the top node of the decision tree for the torture victim, and it is a stark split. Of course the difficult part is that you do not know exactly who is a Nazi pig and who is not. So you might start off with a reasonable benefit of the doubt and collect evidence from there to update your current assumptions. But how do you deal with someone you think has a 10 chance of being a Nazi pig? How do you deal with someone you think has an 80 chance of being a Nazi pig? That is your own utility slash decision function and it is not easy. People have to make decisions based on imperfect information all the time, but this purposefully inflicted torture pushes it past what people are accustomed to have to deal with in ordinary situations. Nonetheless, the government is accountable for the aggregate situation where torture occurs regularly and systematically in North American society. The NPT is your firewall. As a corollary, the external firewall theorem states that you do not care in the slightest bit what Mengele thinks. Analyze the external incomings for nature and source, as well as for other evidence if you choose to, and then send them straight to your mental deep null. Then work each day to get the pigs hanged in the real world, in the best way you can. There is also an internal firewall theorem, your brain is your own to think whatever you want with. Simply invoke it and think about something entirely different if you are thinking something that you don't want to be thinking about. Train yourself toward that, at any rate. Some suggestions for thinking about the harassment. The way to think of a non-consensual external is as an advanced cattle prod that can be modulated in various ways to cause you pain. The modulation happens to be with words or clicks, but that is secondary. It is a modulated cattle prod. Notice it and try to get a feel for the nature and source of the signal. Where does it seem to be coming from? What is the quality of the signal? Later you can analyze the sigh-off sentence the pigs modulated onto the cattle prod signal if you feel like it. This may reveal more about them than about you. The modulation is based on you reflected off of their filthy Nazi distorting mirror with their intention being to cause you harm. You might keep a rough histogram count on you or to pig phrases, for example. Does the signal ever have a foreign accent or speak a foreign language? Probably not. But basically understand that the Nazi pigs are complete, pathological liars. 
If they flatter you one second they'll kick you in the head three beats later, you can almost count on it. Pathological lies only tell the nominal truth as part of a larger lie, and the purpose is to destroy your mental well-being and your life. Source before semantics signal before semantics. The source is where the signal comes from, both the person sending it and the sensory input method by which you receive it. The semantics is the meaning of the signal, it is the interpretation of the signal and its modulation. For example, the semantics of a signal will often be its interpretation as an English sentence. If the signal comes in on a relic channel, do not even give it a semantics except perhaps as part of an evidence gathering process. It is just a sensation you feel from the external cattle prod. The presence of the non-consensual external signal itself is torture and is the only real information, since the modulation is by pathological liars whose intention is to cause you harm. Don't debate the autopig or the real-time idiot. Even if it's easy. Unless you feel like it. They hate it when you ignore them. Go on with your ordinary life, meeting people and especially speaking out and working for justice in the real world. You can only really ignore them when you know what is going on, though. Some of the people who they march around their own homes like robots probably think they are just ignoring it. There is a big difference between an experienced victim deciding to ignore future signals and some well-meaning advice giver who has never been tortured telling you to just ignore it. On our next episode, we will complete the Nazi pig theorem. Visit www.targetedindividualscanada.wordpress.com for more information. In this episode, the completion of the Nazi pig theorem by Alan Barker. If it is indistinguishable from an auto pig, treat it as if it were an auto pig. With some basic voice recognition type software applied to raped subvocalized thoughts, I could write an I like program that sounded just like the repetitive, simple patterned Nazi pigs I am familiar with. In this sense, the real time idiots do not even pass the Turing test. Actual people who are not torturers have names, they do not repeat things endlessly, they think things other than harassing you and commenting on your thoughts, and they can push a few calculator buttons. For instance, why do you never hear someone driving their car down the street thinking use a turn signal, you asshole? Don't explain your thinking to the Nazi pigs, it is better if they misunderstand what they rape from you. By default you are only ever thinking to yourself. Work toward the rapid extinction of the Nazi conditioning imposed on you, at least as rapidly as you can manage. Try to extinguish your conditioned responses and replace them with only an awareness of the triggering sensation. Some are random events acting as triggers, while others are purposely inflicted. It may help to write about what you experience or keep a journal. There are pros and cons to this, though, since the pigs will have access to what you write also. It might provide them with feedback to help them torture you or others. If you complain about something they will almost surely start doing it to you more. You have to weigh whether writing about it helps you to deal with it, like when you can share it with other people and when you see how stupid it really looks when written out. Stupidity is no barrier to the torturers, in fact it is part of the torture. For example, if you make a self-deprecating joke it will not be long before the pigs are goading you with the subject of the joke for real. Of course much of the torture is never anything clever the torturers do, but your own knowledge that these people who do not even know you nonetheless hate you enough to violate your mind and then go to a great deal of effort to try to inflict serious harm on you often seemingly for their own entertainment. Try tuning out the pigs like you might cure yourself of hiccups. It might work, or at least help you train yourself to ignore the pigs. Notice the nature and source of the signals. The mental gnats meant to annoy you. Parasitic mind fleas. If you think like the monkey, you'll be as dumb as the monkey. If you watch that TV too much you'll be as dumb as the morons on it. They will entertain you right into digging your own grave. How can a society I detest defile me? How do you deal with a secrecy bred society of dumb as cows innocent people, Nazi pigs, and victims? Or the collaborators, apologists? and profiteers. What about the people who idiotically ask, 
Why are you ongoing torture victims so obsessed with your torture and human rights, etc.? The social system where no one can talk about the elephant in the living room, even though many people know at least that something is there. Did people not get born with tongues to speak with? Or is this a conspiracy of idiots and cowards? What the hell is wrong with these people? What kind of people complacently live in a society where torture regularly and systematically occurs, pretending it doesn't? Is it still that old pig slaver mentality, or the ability to look away from such abominations as an everyday thing? For centuries it was forbidden to teach slaves basic skills like reading. Is it better if you can read but only have access to lies? Every day for the mind control victims, it is like the rape victim who was to go out and interact in the society where her rapist is still at large. The difference is that there is a whole conspiracy of rapists and they rape the victims each and every day. So perhaps it is closer to what were euphemistically called comfort girls. How do you think it feels to wake up with a pig in your head? Is that the only alternative to being dumb as a cow and wearing a gag in this society? The consensus reality of the average citizen is far, far from the real truth on the ground. Americans are the best liars and biggest hypocrites on the planet. They will probably even be flattered by that description. They love being number one, after all. Hypocrisy is like lies, in the sense that there is ordinary hypocrisy and there is big hypocrisy. If you credibly call an American a big sense hypocrite they will often start spewing propaganda that celebrates ordinary, everyday hypocrisy like not telling someone their new haircut looks bad. Americans want to be both peepers and prudes, they want to rig the game and call it free enterprise, and they want to be known for freedom and liberty regardless of any domestic atrocities they commit. You can never untorture someone. If people are capable of outrage there will be far fewer outrages. How dare those pigs do that to anybody, for victims, if it's not useful or enjoyable or necessary, it's a worthless thought. Zap it out of existence with IFT and think something else. Truly internal, self-mind control is a good thing. External non-consensual mind control is mingeli like torture. Nonans follow from non-consensual externals. Except perhaps one to put it in the trash can or a few to analyze it for evidence, nature and source. But think anything you want. I curse the pig shit Nazis sometimes. Focus your anger. Ah, how sad it is, Auschwitz in the springtime. One springtime after another. You will feel stronger some days, fatigued others if this essay helps you, watch it again when you need a reminder. The Nazi harassment never reflects on you. Visit www.targetedindividualscanada.wordpress.com for more information.